Hey, David Duvall had an incredible run of golf back in the mid to late 90s, just before Tiger emerged as the world's dominant player. Well, that was David Duvall back in 96, 97. In about an 18 month stretch, he won like a dozen tournaments. Now, right after this, let's take a look and see what we can learn from David Duvall's swing and why the average golfer should swing more like David Duvall in every way. So stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve from HitItLonger.com. I continue my journey to hit the ball longer and straighter than I ever have before. If you'd like to join me, hit the subscribe button, like this video if you got some benefit. All right, if you've never looked at David Duvall before, the, probably the number one feature that he's kind of known for is the really, really strong grip that he had. So what does a strong grip mean? He had both hands turned over to the right, or which you might say clockwise. So he had his left hand with the thumb more at two o'clock instead of one o'clock. And you could really see the logo of his glove. And then the right hand was much more underneath than what would be traditional or orthodox, or you might say textbook. Now this strong grip really, really set up the whole rest of the swing. And it'd be really fascinating to go back into his childhood and figure out which emerged which, which was the chicken and which was the egg. Did the grip stimulate the swing or did the swing cause him to have to grip it the way he did? But certainly the average golfer at home does not grip it strong enough. So I see a lot of grips in my live one-on-one -on -one lessons where the thumb is only at 12 o'clock, the hand is too much on the side of the club and it looks more like this. And so for a lot of people, I'm constantly correcting them to get their hand, not just the thumb, but get their hand over the top of the club more and into a stronger position like this. Now, if we look at David Duvall from the down the line angle, we could really see that his backswing was a little bit more rounded than a lot of the other people playing on tour at that time. We're coming out of kind of the classical age, starting to get some different shaped swings. And if you remember, you'd see like a Nicholas or a Tom Watson, those guys are really, really upright. And that was kind of the school of thought back then. And Duvall had a little bit more of a rounded, that was to say, instead of being up, up here like a Nicholas, he had a little bit more here. So not to say that he was flat, certainly, because he wasn't really flat, but he was certainly flatter than most, had just a little bit more of a rounded swing. Most amateur golfers out there, they might start off in that direction, taking the club back like this, but then they're gonna do a big arm lift and they're gonna get way too high. And so it's another thing you can study about Duvall that you can probably move down on the number line as you wanna feel, if you can imagine that plane line, that Hogan glass to keep that backswing a little bit more rounded and underneath to the top to keep you from coming back over the top of it in your transition. Now, another really strong hallmark of the Duvall swing was how much he turned his chest. And in order to do that, he really released his head, in, in his case, actually very early. So he might have been looking up the fairway at the moment of impact, but certainly he was getting his hips and his chest incredibly open. Now, if that's a 10 on the Duvall number scale, most golfers at home watching this, you're more like a three or a four. You would undercook both of these. So in your effort to maybe keep your head down, you're probably anchoring it a little too long and not allowing the body to really wheel open by the time you reach impact. So a lot of my one-on-one -on -one students, I get them to, to go for this feel. And it really helps a lot as the average golfer tends to kind of stall their turn and come back to impact looking way too much like a dress. And you see these videos and images of Duvall, he's just really turned open, wide open. And so that is a really good feel or sensation to move yourself uh, from where you are now a little further down the Duvall number line. Not to say that you have to swing just like him, but for many people, it would be very helpful if you were to swing more like that.
and one last really big difference in the Duval swing that you might not have seen like in the Tiger swing is since we've got this strong turn and this really strong grip looking like this, well, we simply had to modify the release. We have to have a release where the right forearm stays under, turned under like in this position with the pinky leading and throwing the club head without allowing this forearm to even turn back to here again. It's gonna be like this and you're gonna turn and you're gonna fling that thing extremely free. There's no question. He did not hit fades with the strong grip by holding on to it. He hit fades with the strong grip by releasing with the right arm under. So something like this, see how my fleshy part of my right arm stays up this way, rather than having it come down square. Again, if I turn the club closed, now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with my forearms to bring it back to square again. It's gonna have to go, we're gonna have to rotate everything about 30 degrees this way and flap the wrist through more like that. So it's a little bit more like a screwball release that helps to keep the club face or the toe from ever passing the heel. So Duvall almost never missed the ball to the left. And for such a strong grip, he actually uh, tended to play a small fade. But the lesson in the hands is that no matter what your grip or club face is looking like on the downswing is that we've still always got to throw that club head so that we can get some good speed going. All right, let's see if I can make a feeble attempt at a Duval swing. I'm gonna start with the really strong grip. And if I see if I can turn my chest hard enough and release my head, See if I can hit a fade out of it. So here's the right hand going more under. Here we go. All right, again, let me just emphasize that I don't recommend you swing precisely like, like David Duvall, although it is a model that has worked, not just for him, but the strong grip fade bias has worked to put several other people into the Hall of Fame as well. And so you can't do, go totally wrong copying Duval, but instead should take those hallmarks, those trademarks, the differences in his swing, and just understand that the average golfer kind of is on the other side of the number line in those categories. And so swinging more like Duval in these categories can help you and a lot of other golfers. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. I'm Steve, and if I don't see you in the next video, I hope I see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.